On December 6th, President Trump's words shook the world. He recognized Jerusalem as the capital of Israel, and whether he knows it or not, fulfilled his part in a frightening biblical prophecy. Because according to the final chapters of the Bible, our country and every American citizen are about to face its greatest tribulation. Only the church leaders know the true meaning of this biblical prophecy that is encrypted in the writings of four ancient prophets, inspired to send a warning across the centuries to all true Christians and patriots. Therefore, before watching this documentary, be forewarned. You are about to see how all the world's leaders and their armies are silently playing their part in the lead up to the greatest and darkest event in human history. An event that may leave 290 million Americans dead in its wake. Once you witness the chilling evidence of the words of our Lord coming true, there is no turning back. It will simply be impossible for you to go about your daily life like you used to before knowing the truth. But take comfort, for it is God's will that you are here now so that you may have the time to prepare and maybe grant you salvation from all the wickedness of our times. And if you're feeling skeptical right now, let me ask you one question. Who would have thought 70 years ago that the Jewish people would have a country to call their own? Only those who read Ezekiel chapter 37 that is what the prophet wrote 2,700 years ago. The hand of the Lord was on me and set me in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. Then he said to me, These bones are the people of Israel, my people. I will take the Israelites out of the nations where they have gone. I will gather them from all around and bring them back into their own land. I will make them one nation in the land on the mountains of Israel. Word by word, the prophecy made by Ezekiel came true. In 1947, the nation of Israel was born after the horror of the Holocaust, symbolized by the Valley of Bones. Scattered for more than 2,000 years, the Jewish people come from all over the world into this new state and made it an economic and military power. Yet, it was not whole. Israel needed Jerusalem to become its rightful capital again, and that only happened with the support of President Trump. However, to the north of Israel, other biblical prophecies have come true. The prophets Isaiah and Jeremiah write about this Syrian civil war. This is what the prophet Isaiah says, Damascus will no longer be a city, but will become a heap of ruins. And these are the words of Jeremiah. Damascus has become feeble. She has turned to flee, and panic has gripped her. Anguish and pain have seized her. Surely her young men will fall in the streets. For 5,000 years, the capital city of Syria stood as one of the oldest and most prosperous cities in the world. But the civil war began in 2011 and turned it into a ruin. Not only do the prophets talk about the war, but also the refugee crisis and the deaths of its men fighting for one side or the other. The army of Syrian dictator Bashar al-Assad has been fighting the rebels backed by the United States, Israel, Turkey, Jordan and Saudi Arabia, and ISIS terrorists. In 2015, Bashar al-Assad was at the brink of total defeat. Yet exactly at that time, another biblical prophecy was fulfilled. Ezekiel 38 tells of Russia coming to the border of Israel. The word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, set your face against Gog of the land of Magog. I will turn you around, put hooks in your jaws, and bring you out with your army. In the latter years, you will come into the land of those brought back from the sword and gathered from many people on the mountains of Israel. One only has to look at the map of the world as it was known at the time of the prophet to understand. To the north of the Caspian Sea, we find the people known as Magog, inhabiting the land known as Rosh. Over time, the ancient name of Rosh became current-day Russia. Twice, Ezekiel says that Magog will bring his armies from the extreme north to the border of Israel. None other than President Ronald Reagan a devout Christian 
said many times he truly believed Russia to be Magog according to Ezekiel. What about the word Gog? Bible scholars agree that the word Gog is not an actual name but a title. He is the ruler of the land of Magog, like a king or a czar. Ezekiel clearly says that Russia will come to the mountains of Israel in the latter years. This happened in September 2015 and never before. For the first time in history, the Russian army, navy, and air force became involved in a war in the Middle East. According to Ezekiel, Magog's armies has several allies, Persia, Kush, and Gomer and Togarma. Iran has been known as Persia for much of its history during the time of the prophets and beyond. Right now, Iranian troops are on the ground in Syria, fighting side by side with the Russians and the forces loyal to the regime of Bashar al-Assad. Put and Kush are the ancient names of Libya and Egypt. Egypt and Libya both suffered civil wars and the new leadership is very friendly to the Russians. But the greatest surprise is the land known to Ezekiel as Gomer and Togarma. The historian Flavius Josephus references Togarma and Gomer as the people that lived on the territory of present-day Turkey. In fact, Turkish history books identify these tribes as living on their land at the time of the prophets. Three years ago, Turkey was a strong NATO ally, but everything changed after the failed coup attempt in 2016. Now, Turkey has become increasingly hostile to NATO and the United States. It forced NATO to remove forces from its bases. It's buying weapons from Russia. It fully condemned the idea of Jerusalem becoming the capital of Israel. And in fact, right now, the Turkish army is in Syria, fighting to defeat the enemies of the Syrian dictator. The End Times Alliance, prophesied in the first verses of Ezekiel chapter 38, has already been formed. Never in the history of mankind has there been an alliance between Russia, Iran, and Turkey. Now, one final prophecy needs to be fulfilled before the start of World War III. We saw how Jeremiah predicted the destruction of Damascus in chapter 49, but there is one more thing he wrote about that has not happened yet. And I will kindle a fire in the wall of Damascus, and it shall consume the palaces of Ben-Hadad. Ben-Hadad is not an actual person, but a title. Just do one simple search online, and you will discover that Ben-Hadad is the ruler of Aram Damascus. While it is clear that Bashar al-Assad is the current ruler of Damascus, Aram is a region in Syria now known as Aleppo. The city of Aleppo was just recently recaptured by the regime of Syrian President Bashar al-Assad with the help of Iran and Russia. And Jeremiah says that soon his palace will be burning. How does this happen? Look no further than the headlines of recent months and you see time and time again Israel calling for the assassination of the Syrian dictator. Isaiah also writes about the end of Syria's dictator. The fortified city will disappear from Ephraim and royal power from Damascus. This is the spark that ignites World War III. Ezekiel chapter 38 states that two-thirds of Israel will be destroyed in this coming war, and those left in the Holy Lands will face grief and pain and hardship. So what happens to the United States? Will we not help Israel at its darkest hour? To answer this question, we must first find the United States in biblical prophecy. John the Apostle in the book of Revelation and Jeremiah and Isaiah talk about another end times nation in their writings. A nation called Babylon or Mystery Babylon. The name is deeply symbolic. Ancient Babylon was a city made great by people who came from all parts of the ancient world just like immigrants helped make the United States the world's only superpower. And because the prophets didn't know of the existence of the North American continent at the time of the visions, they called it Mystery Babylon. Some say Biblical Babylon refers to ancient Iraq. But if that is true, why do the prophets see it as a nation surrounded by waters? O thou that dwellest upon many waters, abundant in treasures, where all who had ships on the sea became rich through her wealth, 
While biblical Babylon has plentiful access to waters rich in resources, most of Iraq is a desert and has only a narrow stretch of coastline. Why do the prophets talk about pollution when in ancient Iraq there could be no such thing? Thou hast destroyed thy land. I have polluted mine inheritance and have given them into thine hand. Babylon mounts up to heaven and descends above the heights of the clouds. These metaphors clearly reference a nation that has discovered flight. It is obvious that Babylon or Mystery Babylon can't be ancient Iraq. But the prophets have more to say about this end times nation. Babylon is hailed as a queen among nations, the lady of kingdoms. According to the prophets, Babylon reigneth over the kings of the earth. It is the praise of the entire earth and an astonishment among the nations. It is a place of great riches and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. In fact, the prophets say clearly that should something happen to Babylon, all worldwide trade would stop. The merchants of the earth will weep and mourn over her because no one buys their cargoes anymore. It is the number one military power and it's called the hammer of the whole earth. Isaiah in verse 18 chapter 2 talks about how Babylon's beginning would be unique and awe-inspiring. America was created out of the former British colonies, a nation made out of many states just like the prophets foretold. Our ancestors were the first British colonists and we speak their language. That's the reason why Jeremiah sees England like a mother to the US, according to verse 50 chapter 12. More so, the prophets talk about the lion that is on the sigil of the mother of Babylon. England uses the lion as its royal symbol. The last crew the prophets left us is incredibly accurate. The scripture often refers to Babylon as a woman. According to the book of Revelations, she sits atop water and has a golden cup in her right hand and a crown of seven rays on her head. And the woman which thou sawest in that great city, which reigneth over the kings of the earth. The United Nations, in theory, reigns over all the kings of the earth, and is situated in New York, the great city where you can see the Statue of Liberty. The statue is the most well-known landmark in the U.S., and the symbol of Babylon the prophets are referring to in their clues. So why, then, are they also calling it the Whore of Babylon? The sculptor of the Statue of Liberty was Auguste Bertoldi, a mason belonging to the Great Masonic Lodge in Paris. Before beginning the Statue of Liberty project, Bertoldi was seeking commission to construct a giant statue of the goddess Ishtar. The Romans also adopted this fertility goddess, but they changed the name to Libertas in Latin, Liberty in English. Libertas is the mythological equivalent of Ishtar. Therefore, the Statue of Liberty is in fact a statue of Ishtar, the Babylonian goddess of fertility, love, and sex. According to the ancient Babylonian rituals, one could only be purified of sin after intercourse with a temple priest or priestess of Ishtar. In return for this salvation, a gift offering was needed. Ishtar was the patron mother of the temple priestesses and priests. She was the mother of what we would call today prostitution. This is why Ishtar was seen by early Christians as the whore of Babylon. And that is why the Statue of Liberty, the symbol of America, is also called by the prophets, the whore of Babylon. Do you think it is just a coincidence that the US, the home of the greatest and most famous statue of Ishtar, provides 65% of pornographic movies and adult entertainment to the world? Is it just another coincidence that this is the country where sexual liberation originated and spread to the rest of the world? It's not. It's just like the scriptures foretold. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. The U.S. today has the most powerful economy and military, controls worldwide commerce, is proud and arrogant, has the most developed air force and space program, and it is the envy of the world. It houses the whore of Babylon. It reigns over the kings of the earth. And unfortunately for every living American, 
It is Mystery Babylon. This is what the prophets say about the great enemy of Babylon. For out of the north there cometh up a nation against her, which shall make her land desolate. They come from a far country, from the end of heaven, and the weapons of his indignation to destroy the whole land. Remember which country the prophet said was from the north? The same country that Ezekiel said will lead a great alliance of nations to the borders of Israel? If war happens, the United States must be the first target. That is why the prophets foretell that at the start of this war, Russia will unexpectedly use a very special weapon, the weapon of indignation, against the whole territory of the U.S., a weapon like which the world has never seen. The Holy Book shows how Babylon will feel the fury of this terrible weapon. This weapon will hit our entire country and all our defenses will be in vain. Though Babylon should mount up to heaven, and though she should fortify the height of her strength, yet the spoilers come unto her. This weapon paralyzes our military and leaves it almost defenseless. How is the hammer of the whole earth cut asunder and broken? The mighty men of Babylon have forborne to fight. Their might hath failed. The broad walls of Babylon shall be utterly broken, and her high gates shall be burned with fire. She hath given her hand. Her foundations are fallen. Her walls are thrown down. Because the spoiler is come upon her, even upon Babylon, and her mighty men are taken, every one of their bows is broken. And after the attack, Babylon is left silent and in darkness. Sit thou silent, and get thee into darkness, for thou shalt no more be called the Lady of Kingdoms. All three prophets tell of the fall of Babylon, the destruction of the United States of America as we know it. This is not an event that happened to ancient Babylon in the past. History has never recorded the fall of a state or a city in the way described by the prophets. What weapon could silence an entire continent in one hour? The world has never seen one until a few years ago with the creation of the Electromagnetic Pulse or EMP. Over and over think tanks like the EMP Commission working for the Senate have warned how this is the greatest and perhaps only real vulnerability of the United States. Yet no administration has done anything about it. We are completely unprepared for what's coming. Every report says the same thing. This event can wipe out 90% of Americans and all it takes is just one warhead to be detonated above the United States to take us back to medieval times. The lasting effects will destroy society as we know it, exactly as the scriptures predicted. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine. Without hospitals or pharmacies being able to function, people won't be able to take their necessary medication. Without running water, heat and garbage disposal, diseases will break out. As cars and trucks stop running, market shelves will become empty. Desperate people will become looters and there will be food riots. There will be no police, no law, no health care, no help. It will all descend into chaos and confusion. A complete collapse of everything we take for granted today. As the prophet Jeremiah says, And it shall be, when thou hast made an end of reading this book, that thou shalt bind it to a stone, and cast it into the midst of Euphrates. And thou shalt say, Thus shall Babylon sink, and shall not rise from the evil that it will bring upon her. And this is the start of the time of tribulation and sorrows. For then shall be a great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. And yet, the prophet shows that there is still hope, but the ones who endures to the end will be saved. The message couldn't be any clearer. The warnings are there so that only the ones who believe the words and warnings of our Lord and prepare will be saved.